decades. And it seems that a deteriorating society is exactly what political correctness strives for. But just what is political correctness? As you're about to see, political correctness is nothing less than a Marxist ideology. Marxism translated from economic into cultural terms in an effort going back not to the 1960s, but to World War I. Critical theory is the basis for gay studies, black studies, women's studies, and various other studies departments found on American university campuses today. These departments are the home base of political correctness. America today is in the throes of the greatest and direst transformation in its history. We are becoming an ideological state, a state with an official state ideology enforced by the power of the state. In hate crimes, we now have people serving jail sentences for political thoughts. And the Congress is now moving to expand that category ever further. Affirmative action is part of it. The terror against anyone who dissents from political correctness on campus is part of it. It's exactly what we've seen happen in Russia, in Germany, in Italy, in China, and it's now coming here. And we don't recognize it because we just call it political correctness and laugh it off. My message this morning is it's not funny. It's here. It is growing pace and it is eventually going to destroy, as it seeks to destroy, everything that we have ever defined as our freedom and our culture. Thank you. Um, I think the potential is there for a grassroots resistance movement. I think the most, important, the most important thing to do is break the Frankfurt School's own silence. Again, it was very, very careful to disguise its origins, initially in Germany, but then much more so when it came here, and to disguise its Marxism. And if the average American realizes that this stuff is Marxism, that it's a heretical school of it, but it is totally Marxist in, in its origins, uh, that uh, then the light bulb will go on and he'll realize what he's dealing with. And it's effective because it shuts down debate on the issues that they disagree with. You just label it politically incorrect. Uh, they label people racist, uh, fanatics, right-wing extremists. You don't have to get to the issues like moral degeneracy, which they promote. Well, you shut people down. You're, you're bigots and you're too straight-laced. Uh, absurd concepts like diversity is our strength and multiculturalism is promoted. Anybody that takes exception to that or to immigration policies, whatever their, the left's agenda is, that becomes the politically correct. And those that disagree, which the vast majority of the American people do on most of these issues, they shut down debate on it within the media and the institutions, particularly in education, by simply labeling it as politically incorrect. How dare you have these thoughts after we've already told you that this is what we're supposed to believe in? I'd like to speak about multiculturalism from a micro view, a small incident, and try to discuss how it throws light on the larger picture. And my point will be this, that our insistence on multiculturalism, on multiracialism, on all these multis, slowly puts more and more constraints on our discourse, that it is, in fact, a slowly tightening noose on what we are permitted to say and ultimately what we are permitted to think. This has to do, my perspective on this has to do with a report that the New Century Foundation, which publishes American Renaissance, recently issued. The report was called uh, The Color of Crime. Here is a copy of it and uh, we released it last month. It uh, has a number of, uh, makes an, a number of interesting points about crime. Uh, the subtitle is Race, Crime, and Violence in America, and it is filled with statistics about who is committing crime, under what circumstances, and against whom. Well, let me paraphrase again. Is he not saying, is he not saying that if the results of this study show that a vast majority of this gun violence, perhaps every single incident of, of gun violence, turns out to have been the work of Hispanics or blacks. If that's the case, might it be possible, dare I say it, someone in Duluth might decide, well, wait a minute, maybe we don't have a gun problem, maybe we have a minority problem. <laughs> this 
of course, is the question that multiculturalism makes impossible. We are not allowed to ask that question because in multiculturalism, we cannot have a minority problem. That is forbidden. And so, if we have a study that suggests that might be the case, what do we do? We simply suppress the data. David Horowitz was present at the birth of campus political correctness. Well, I was, I was a radical in the 60s. I was a Marxist. Uh, and, uh, you know, my, my buddies were people like Tom Hayden. Um, I edited the largest magazine of the left at the time, at Ramparts. But the Frankfurt School was important in Marxism because they no longer believed really in the future. They only believed in, in destroying uh, capitalism and destroying, uh, you know, bourgeois democracy is what we would have called it. And if you look at today's campuses, that, that kind of nihilism is really the dominant theme. That is, attack America. The United States has undergone a cultural, moral, and religious revolution. And a militant secularism has arisen in this country. It's always had a hold on the intellectual and academic elites. But in the 1960s, it captured the young in the universities and the colleges. And we had this great battle cultural war begin then nationally. And since then, if you will, secularism has, has really achieved dominance in the academic community and in the intellectual community and the entertainment community in Hollywood, uh, among part of the, uh, the political community, but not the nation as a whole. However, it is much stronger than it was, and so this is the basis of the great cultural war we're undergoing uh, right now. And this militant, it is an anti-Christian, anti-God, anti-traditionalist revolution. It's partly a, the sexual revolution has a lot to do with it and how people live. And so we are two countries now. We are two countries morally and socially and culturally and theologically, and cultural wars do not lend themselves to peaceful coexistence. One side prevails or the other prevails, and the truth is that while the conservatives, in my judgment, we won the Cold War with political and economic communism, We've lost the cultural war with cultural Marxism, which I think has prevailed pretty much in the United States, or is now the dominant culture, whereas those of us who are traditionalists, we are, if you will, the counterculture. In other words, they had to get into the culture and change the way of people's thinking. And if people were thinking about patriotism and nation and God and country, that was a mechanism which was too resistant to Marxism. It could never take hold. So you had to erode and destroy that in the individuals. That began what's called the long march through the institutions, through the seminaries, through the churches, through the media, through Hollywood, and all the rest of it to create an anti-Christian culture which would destroy the Christian beliefs and convictions in the vast majority of the people so they would embrace the ideas of Marxism and they would embrace the ideas that they had rejected and they would be open to a takeover basically by Marxists. Now, not political Marxists, but cultural Marxists. Marx and Hegel had paved the way for the progressives, who in turn had paved the way for the Frankfurt School, who had then attacked the American way of life by pushing cultural Marxism through critical theory. There's a lot going on there. Very briefly, what's the Frankfurt School? And why should anyone watching this interview care? To me, my one discovery, my one great epiphany, my one aha moment that I said, I, I got it. I got it. I see what exactly happened with, with in this country. The Frankfurt School were emigres from... Uh, uh, Germany, well, Austria. Well, well, Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 there was a, it was the equivalent of this, the Hoover Institution. What, the Hoover Institution is to Stanford University. The Frankfurt uh, School was a think tank at, at the University of Frankfurt. And they were social scientists uh, like Herbert Marcuse, Antonio Gramsci, uh, Horkheimer, Adorno. These were all a bunch of guys mm -hmm. in, in the middle of World War II who had suffered Europe in Europe, you know, two world wars in a row. 
and they had been fighting. They had, you know, they had been fighting the Nazis, and they were trying to figure out another aspect of how to uh, affect how how to spread Marxism around the world. You a, a, they came up with at the end of the day, we could call it uh, cultural Marxism, but at the end of the day, we experience it on a day to day basis, and by that I mean a minute by minute, second by second basis. Uh, it's political correctness and it's multicultural. Vouch for that, but what we're first going to have to do is, is address the problem. Uh, for much of the last the latter part of the 20, 20th century, America dealt with communism, which was economic Marxism. And what America was susceptible to during that period of time was cultural Marxism. Cultural Marxism is political correctness, it's multiculturalism, and it's a war on Judeo-Christianity. And we were... We were Democrat, do you agree with that? I, I do. We're, we're fighting a war now, by the way, Sean, as you and I have discussed many times, which is against Al-Qaeda. It is a fight where we are at risk, and our values are critically well, tell, important. Tell this to the White House. They think yeah. it's, a, you know, these are man-made disasters. But, yeah. But here, look, political correctness has always been my battle. I talk about it ad, 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 ad nauseum. What political correctness is, is like Sharia law. It's an extra constitutional uh, body of law where your life it, it can end, basically, your, your livelihood, your job could end, not because of what happens in the court system, but because what happens in the media, because we abide by it in colleges, political correctness happens. It's, it's a terrible thing, and, and we're dealing with it with that story. Absolutely. So we're, people really have lost a sense of dignity and self-respect and definitely a common culture. That was part of the big, massive uh, communist move for multiculturalism. It wasn't be nice to other cultures. It was to help you destroy your own cohesive majority. Get rid of all other cultures and replace it with the corporate Borg Prozac culture. Mm -hmm, that's correct. And so when you have nothing... See, men tend to stand up for their culture. They stand up for their family. When you destroy the culture, the traditions, and their family, they have nothing left to stand up for. They won't fight for anything. The culture now is men making jokes about sex and acting tough.